Contact in glass. During a month of cold work in March, my parents mix the cool blue alginate, the drill humming as it stirs the mixture that will set like jello. In the impressions, grandmother's face is old and wrinkled, her hands knobby from arthritis and years of farm work, raising sheep, chickens, and horses. 21 sleek Hungarians fill most of her time with vet visits, stitches, baling hay, and mucking stalls. These hands welcome my brother's smooth, young face as they did when he was born. In plaster positives taken from alginate molds, my parents bond her hands to his face and then to graphite to be cast in glass. At 2,050 degrees, my parents lift bright yellow hot glass out of the furnace, pour it into the graphite mold, filling the void between grandmother and my brother. What's between us, I think, is an incredible amount of trust and compassion. I guess when I think about our lives together, they're so intertwined that it's hard for me most of the time to imagine us not being together. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is our collaboration. The work that we produce is something that neither one of us would make. And we've come to, we've been working together long enough and we've developed a, a way of working that both of us have input in the piece. It's not what Kate would make, it's not what I would make, but it's something that's formed between us and is a product of our collaboration. I would say within about six to nine months of John and I starting to collaborate, pretty much both of us let go of our own work. And some of that was there's only so many hours in the day, and some of it was just we were so excited by the process and what we were making. Even doing photography is my major interest in college. I couldn't stay away from glass. Um, I'd gotten to know a lot of dad's graduate students and they were like um, family to me, a lot of them were, and I just, I, I loved the material. And so I combined photography and glass and I took the glass class as independent study so I could get to know the students. <laughs> yeah. Which is where we met. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what originally brought me to North Carolina is John, I had helped him a little bit in the dark room in Wisconsin and he had said, well, why don't you come down for a summer and you can help me work on printing all the photographs that are gonna go in dad's book. And I was like, sure, that's cool. I had applied to graduate school, hadn't heard whether I was in or not yet. And I was like, that'd be a cool summer project. And I was also in love with John, so that made it a little bit easier to come down at the time. Dad was a driven person. He really wanted to get glass as a material in the hands of artists. And he felt like it was such an expressive material that it wasn't used in that way. It was an industrial material. There were designers who didn't touch the glass. There were factory workers who made what they designed, but they didn't have the passion of, of making that design of, of their own. Harvey realized early on that you can't start a movement with two people. You need to have a critical mass. 
And that's what teaching in a university did. One, it took glass in a really different direction than a lot of the other crafts went in because it was taught in an art department and didn't start in craft schools or it wasn't something that was passed on by your grandmother or your grandfather, like woodworking or even a lot of ceramics. It the was, teaching of it wasn't technique based, it was the a concept. What, what was it that you wanted to express? And I think Harvey also was really interested in the material much as an abstract expressionist would, where you're reacting to the material. That was something that was really exciting to him when he finally could get his hands on the glass and not just see it in a factory, was being able to react to the way the glass moved when it was hot or when it broke or in all the different you know ways that glass you know changes and is different in different conditions states and, and conditions. states, yeah. He was very excited about that. He didn't come in and tell us what to make. He rarely commented on a piece, it's good or bad, but he gave us the space and the tools to experiment and to try things and encouraged us and, you know, gave us the opportunity to, to just be able to make things, to succeed and to fail. And when we started knowing that he approved was when he'd say, that piece is mine. And he'd walk into the studio and he'd just say, I want that one for myself. And we went, oh, I guess he likes it. <laughs> So when he gave us studio time, Kate and I started working together, either making Kate's work or trying to make something that I was interested in. And um, my skills weren't there. It was, it's hard to blow glass by yourself. So I was assisting Kate and we were making things that ended up in the trash that we felt were more interesting than what we got. Um, and so we were looking at it and we were all like going, you know, I think we need to stop trying to make something that's really controlled and structured that's an idea of mine or an idea of yours and we need to just play with the material. And so we started thinking about part of what we loved about the glass is when it was hot and fluid and in motion. And we're like, is there a way we can capture that fluid feeling? And so we just started playing with making bag forms. And they were, some of our really early bags were really crude, but it was just playing with the, the form, just playing with the glass hot and trying to capture that moment when something looks fluid, but then when you touch it, it's hard, when it's cold. Mm -hmm. um, and then we added fiberglass to it. And I think by the end of that summer, like early fall, we actually had one or two pieces in a show. And that was a huge boost as young people starting out. So we worked in da your dad's studio for like a year, I think it was. We didn't have a studio finished, so we were still working in your dad's for a number of months till we finished our studio here. Sometimes, rather than forcing the glass to do something, you observe the glass and you watch what the glass is doing under certain circumstances. And sometimes you go, you know what? What I thought I was gonna do isn't gonna be as interesting as if I let the glass move this way. And that was a real learning process for us. And it's just also really fun when you would just kind of let go of what you had like locked in your head about how something should be and were willing to accept moving in a different direction as the piece started to evolve. And then I think at some point, so we'd done the flowers, we'd done the bags, We'd done some of the cut open bags and we started, we'd er, put bags inside of bags. And that came from like a dinner party conversation. A group of friends were having dinner, having a glass of wine. And we're like, what if we put a bag inside of a bag and the bag was transparent? You could see what was inside it. And that started bags in a bag. And that led to the next series where we were thinking about these bags sort of have human characteristics, like sometimes, I mean, by then we had kids. The big bag would be a parent-like figure, and the little ones would be piling on top of it or gathered around it, and we, we were assigning them, in our minds, personalities and 
oh, this is the storyteller and all the children are gathered around to listen. Or this child is just a rebel and they're like trying to climb on top and kick the other ones off. <laughs> or they're like acrobatics. Yeah. And you know, we would make jokes about this while we were making these pieces, but then at one point we looked at each other and we said, you know, it'd be kind of cool to make some pieces where you could express human emotion, human interaction much more directly. And we were like, what if we went back to the human form? And then when we started putting hands and, and faces inside of a block, it became a controlled canvas to look inward at yourself. And maybe a piece of that looking inward was also, you have three children and you start thinking, oh, what am I passing on to my kids? You know, how, how is who I am gonna reflect on who they are? And you start feeling a different level of responsibility in reflecting on who you are in a way that you might not have in your 20s when you're just like carefree and you're not responsible but to anyone. But also seeing how people project a certain personality, but mm -hmm. inside there's something else that they're thinking or they're, mm -hmm. some of the work had, uh, the big part of the work had that aspect to it where you have your public mask and inside you've got this other, feeling or, or other state that you're working with. We started looking at the hands as being something that spoke to, um, it, it could be gender specific or it could be um, age specific, but generally if you look at a set of hands and you take away color, if they're just glass and they're just translucent, you look at those hands and they don't speak to our nationality. They don't speak to our religion. They don't speak to anything. But if you look at them, you might know that that person worked with their hands all their life because they're really rough and calloused from being outside. They speak to the age of the person, their youth. Um, they speak to the connection to the world because the first way that we make physical contact usually is our touch. And I think that was where we started really playing with and using the hands as our dialogue with the world. Mm -hmm. That is something that we bring to each other and that we have between us is that balance between one person sometimes saying, whoa, slow down, you know, look at this a little differently, or the other person going, wow, did you check this out? You know, if one of us is really amped up about things. And I think that that balance and that give and take we have in life is a real gift. I think it also holds that energy of two people interacting, mm -hmm. and hopefully it's something that uh, relates to anyone, can, can see maybe a part of themselves or something that they've observed in it. Um, some of the pieces were holding an energy in the, in the middle of the form, or some of the pieces were exposing an emotion or a, a, something that we've probably discussed and, and said, how can we make this? What do we do to put Express this together? That. Mm -hmm. And I think that also the pieces, some of them are literally my hands and John's hands, or they might be our hands and our children's hands. And they're pieces that are about what's between us in our relationship or what's between us in our relationship to ourselves in the world. Or it could be what's between us in a sense of a responsibility. So we did the one piece that's the children's hands, our hands, and a, a globe form that really represents this planet that we live on. And it was very much honoring this beautiful place that we are in our relationship with it and our children's relationship to it. And I think that that outside environment and all the things we've seen over the years working here shows up in our pieces sometimes. And sometimes our walks are also where you've been like looking at a piece for a while and don't know what the resolution for it is and you know you get about halfway around the property and one of us goes oh, I was just thinking for this do you think this would solve the problem with this work well for me going for a walk is like a meditation it's mm -hmm. a chance to visit 
myself inside quietly. It's a chance to see the progression of time in the way things grow or in the autumn, how they pull in and, and start to retract and, and change. We've used plants directly in direct casting. So the ferns, the, the trees, their leaves mm -hmm. have shown up in our work. We did a whole series of pieces that were spirals and those are definitely inspired by nature but then abstracted whether it's a wave or the way a plant might grow or unfurl. Also just like mean plants and just the natural environment, there's that energy of that space. And an idea is strong enough that we want to make it. We're willing to work through figuring it out. That's where the biggest learning is, is I think if you're not willing to fail or if you're not willing to accept that something's not going to be perfect the first time, Sometimes that's really uncomfortable. Sometimes it's really frustrating, but it also can be like incredibly exciting because when you try something new and when it really finally does succeed and the thought that you had is there or you see something new that you didn't even know existed before, all of a sudden it's like, wow. Now you're in a place where you can take that and like run and do something totally new. So for us, I don't know, that's kind of been the core of our collaboration is being willing to fail, not give up. We bounce <laughs> ideas back and forth and I think just each of us having input generates more ideas. So mm -hmm. We'd rather make a hundred different pieces than the same piece a hundred times. One of the things that I do see in our work is that as we work on a piece together, that each of us, as we bring our views to it and our ideas, one of us will push the other person a little bit further in one direction than we would have gone by ourselves because that person has a slightly different view about how something might look. So for us, when collaboration goes really well, it's very much of that flow of a dance movement where one person starts moving, the other person reacts and follows to it and then you're pulling back and forth. I think that some of the moments in my life that have been most incredible is sharing a sense of awe with someone else where you experience something that's unexpected or beautiful or unusual. And I think when artwork does that to someone, when they look into it and see something new that they didn't expect, that that's, that's a really wonderful thing. Another hope for our work is that its craftsmanship is designed appropriately, that we've done our best to make something that will last. One of the greatest joys in life is that connection and relationship with other people. And I hope that our work expresses some of that in that somebody, each one of us is gonna bring to a piece of artwork our own life experience. So what you look at and see is gonna be a different experience than what I do, but hopefully as people look at our work, it becomes a dialogue between us and that audience. They bring their experience, we bring ours, and then between those two experiences, they might see something new. It might create something new between us. April to May in the oven, cooling. Her fingers shine in the mold like flickering candles. Graphite and plaster glow fluorescent orange, slowly changing to red, then white and dark gray. In June and July, when the sweltering heat halts the work with hot glass, my parents finish the cold work. Digging out plaster, polishing rough glass, 
revealing trapped, opaque bubbles and lines formed in cooling. My brother's eyes open, remembering the first time grandmother's hands held his face nine years ago.